So Honey Boy, it's in a way the complete opposite to Neon Demon uh, in terms of how we have to approach it. Because I knew we were going to be quite free-flowing style because I had seen Alma's documentaries before. But what happened was when we started shooting, it was the shyest emotional factor. We hadn't understood until we started the degree of complexity that it was going to have. My name is Natasha Breyer, ASC. I'm a cinematographer originally from Argentina. I think my voice I probably found it very early on. I started still photography when I was 16. I set up my whole dark room, so I spent like, you know, like a lonely teenager with no friends in a new country for a year, going crazy in the dark room and trying every single weird chemical technique and probably poisoning myself and you know, losing 10 years of life and getting my hands to look 20 years older with all this experimenting, but it was a lot of fun. I was always quite experimental and, and searching for very alternative ways of photographing and trying to express emotions through light and framing. For Honey Boy, it's a film about Shia's childhood that he wrote during rehab. He's playing the role of his father, who was very abusive when he was a kid, in which, you know, he's doing like a big process of healing because he's getting on the skin of the person that really abused him as a kid that he wanted to be loved by. And so Shia is, is going through a lot more than any actor would go through a movie. He was not acting. Shia was not acting, you know. It was very real what he was doing. It was happening there. It required a very specific approach from all departments. And it required that we give him the space to, to get to that state. And then when he was on that state, to do it and do it without waiting for a flag. We had to be prepared for anything. Uh, I have to be prepared like if it's here or there or there or there or maybe he's gonna need to go out. He's also a very, very, very clever actor. I mean, he's a genius. So it's not that just like he needs to do it for his emotion. Like if he ends up going out and doing it out, it's because it's for his emotion and it's because it's actually 10 times better for the scene. We use a lot of LED lighting with wireless and I would just dim the lights accordingly. So if he ended up there, then okay, that, that becomes my key. I dim that one up, I dim this one down and, and I was just literally jamming with the camera operator and with Shia. So Shia is like the, the main dancer and we're following the, the lead and trying to be invisible, dancing for him and elevating visually what, what he was doing. It was really amazing. I, I don't think I've been in such an emotional set, you know, before it was, it was very strong emotionally because of course, you know, we were just doing therapy really through film, very expensive. <laughs> in terms of lenses and camera choices, we use the Alexa Mini with uh, Crystal Express anamorphic lenses, which are the same lenses that I used in Neon Demon. I tested other anamorphic lenses because I wanted to have a little bit more stop and because I have to do so many things on the lens now to make it feel like film. You know, I paint on the lens and put different materials and textures and things in front of it. So I tested everything else that exists in terms of soft looking anamorphic lenses, not too modern. And I always end up choosing the Crystal Express again and deciding I um, pay the price of needing a little bit more light. So I work always with the same DIT since Neon Demon, Ernesto Joven, and he's kind of my brother now. So we have created our own LUT that is kind of our negative. And we do a little bit of light grade on set, but not much when I do scenes that are quite dark, which is most of the time. He brings everything a little bit down for me so that I can overexpose it a little bit. But on the monitor, I still see it very dark, like I want it in the end. But he makes sure that I have enough information so then the blacks are going to be rich and it's not going to go all like grainy and milky. Uh, so we call it the trick in Spanish, la trampa. I do have him doing that live on set because I need to see in the monitor exactly how it's going to be in the end. And so what happens is when we go to grade six months later, it's very little to do. The film is 95% graded. I'm also very extreme with what, you know, what I do on camera, so you can't undo it. 
you know, I put a lot of color, I flash, I do the equivalent of like flashing, you know, what we used to do with the varicon, I'm flashing the film stock, so I do a lot of that on camera, so I'm flashing, you know, the shadows and stuff, and you, you can't undo all that. O obviously, if they chose me to do their movie, they like what I do, but in any case, especially in the testing period, I just show them all the radical things that I want to do and make sure that they want them. And during the first week, you know, a lot of communications so like, look, this is what I'm doing. You won't be able to make it lighter. Are you okay with this darkness? Do you like that its shadows are purple because you won't be able to undo this? Yes, I love it. Okay. If I would have to give an advice to the young people that are in film school or coming out of film school, would be to actually make sure that they go out in the world and they explore the world and they live uh, before they get sucked into making movies and telling stories. Why? Because I feel like we're very young when we go to film school. I think you're a better filmmaker when you lived and the more times your heart was broken and you had some real life experience and you know other people and other cultures and other ways of thinking, you know, you lived in other countries and you traveled, uh, you become richer as a person and then I think you're much richer as a filmmaker. Um, so my advice would be to try to travel. I think it's really important to jump into life, to live life to the full, to immerse yourself in experiences that are gonna challenge you as a human being. And then also you can choose responsible stories to tell, you know that are meaningful, that, that can hopefully make a change. Because at the end of the day, that's what we're here for as storytellers. We have a responsibility. Mm -hmm.